Okay, thank you, Mario Gracia, and good morning, everyone. Uh, for today, um, we are going to be talking about how to customize your own app on CRM Dynamics 365. Uh, let me share my screen and we could just start. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I'm sharing my screen now. Okay. Uh, uh, how to customize your own app. So uh, I will try to do it uh, more practical, but uh, there are some elements that I have to highlight uh, in the theoretical way. So uh, let me start with that. Uh, as an introduction, a custom business app, uh, basically it's a group of components like entities, dashboard, forms, views, charts, and, and business process flow. Basically you just group everything that you need in a specific app. By default, the CRM uh, includes some specific apps that sometimes some um, like um, consultants define or, or, or use it uh, in an implementation. But uh, uh, well, my suggestion will be, uh, why do I need to use the standard ones if I could customize my own with the, with the menus, with, the, with, my, with my process flow uh, according to my business? I, I mean, sometimes when we try to use the standard uh, app, uh, there are some functionalities, some options that, that I don't need to see because probably in my business, I'm not going to be using that functionality. So that's why create an, create an app could be a good option. Additionally, I mean, just to remain focused the, the user and in the functionalities that they are going to use. And additionally, because it's, uh, it allows me to do uh, some additional configuration like security levels, like a specific functionalities that you are not going to be using or that you are not going to have available if you don't, if you use the, the standard ones. So that's why I wanted to include this, this topic uh, today, because I think that is something that is going to be uh, useful for, for everyone. Okay. Um, okay, so let's start. So some general concepts, uh, basically by default, uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM includes a set of, I mean, a collection of, of some apps that are already there. Sometimes when you install some functionalities, like for example, when you install field service, the CRM is going to be uh, presenting you uh, some additional apps, like for example, these yellow ones. So when you install field service, the CRM is going to create that app automatically. But additionally, uh, as I said, uh, you could create your own app and, and you could include all the entities or all the functionalities uh, from, different, uh, from different models, for example, and I want to show you that probably after this slide, or uh, let me show you that now. So if, if I came here to my to my instance, as you can see, I already have all my 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 apps, my my, my standard apps. But additionally, I create one with the optimal name. I, I I'm going to change the icon later because I wanted to show you how to do it. Uh, but basically, on this app. I just have configured all the menus according to my business. So if I want to define here, that is a, my workspace section with the specific functionalities. And if I want to define a menu, like, like basically this is an area, if I want to create an area with customers, with, with sales, and I want to configure my menu with sales and customer service and marketing. So it's, it's up to me, I mean, if I want to create areas for this and have everything in one app, it's okay. But if I want to create multiple apps, for example, one customer service app, one sales app, it's, 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 it's something that you could do it as well, okay? So why I don't use the standard ones? Because if you enter, for example, the customer service, the menu is going to be organized according to the Microsoft suggestion, okay? But there are some functionalities that probably I don't want in that menu or probably I don't want like the schedule menu here or the help menu here. And I don't want to uh, start modifying the, the standard one. So that's why I suggest probably have um, a customized uh, app in that case. 
Okay, let's let's continue with the presentation. So, uh, as I mentioned, there are some occasions that probably you want to create your own app. You want to define your own menu, and 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 that's why we are we are all here. Okay, so how to create an app? From Dynamics 365, go to Settings and Apps and select Create New App. Basically, it's, it's basically it's, it's, it's kind of simple. Just came here, just came here. Actually, you could do that directly from here, create a new app. But it depends on, I mean, it depends a little bit about your, about your, your environment, what it means. If, for example, you have an organized environment like development, QA environment, and later production, probably the best way to do it is not directly here. Why? Because when you create here, after that, if you want to export that, that app to a different environment, I mean, you are going to be doing additional things. So that's why if you want to create that in an environment, uh, in a development environment, and later you want to move it to, Q, uh, to QA environment or production. Uh, so I will recommend you go here and go to advanced settings. And in advanced settings, probably go to solutions. I mean, that, that's the way that, that we did. It. And, and I think that is a good one. So, and we create a group of, a group of solutions and one of those solutions is the app solutions, okay? So you just need to create a solution with the name that you prefer. In my case, it's going to be apps and just go directly to model driven apps and create a new one. In my case, I create one with the name Optimus, okay? So why I'm doing this in this way because later, if I need to move this app to a different environment, it's going to be really easy. But if you do it uh, probably just directly here, the app is going to be created directly in the development environment. But later, if you want to move it to the queue environment, for sure, you need to go to solutions and do the thing that, that I just explained it. But uh, so that's why at the beginning, I prefer to do it in that way, okay? Okay, so when you create a new app button, the CRM is going to ask you for some um, information here, okay? So the information that the CRM is going to be asking here is going to be just like, sorry, ah, sorry, oh, sorry, okay, this one. So it's going to ask you for a name. After that, it's going to ask you for, um, for a name, uh, th that's the name that the app is going to have in the principal menu, in the main menu. After that, it's going to ask you for a unique name that is like a, like internal name or something that the CRM is going to have it uh, just to identify the, the app in the, in the environment. It should be unique. That's why it's unique name. And additionally, you are going to have a description section. That's a good idea. It's a good idea to include a description because as you can say, as uh, when you enter to the apps menu, probably you're going to have a lot of apps. And if you don't have a description, it's going to be in blank. And sometimes there are some users that are going to have in some issues identifying the, the, the app. That's why to, um, I recommend you include an icon that represents your app. And don't leave it with the standard one, because if you create probably two or three apps, all of them are going to have the same icon, uh, like, like some squares. So that's why I recommend you have uh, an icon. Probably, uh, I mean, you, you need to create a web resource to include that icon and later you could uh, just relate the icon here. So I will just explain you how to do it, okay? Additionally, if you already have a solution created in your system, for example, if you already have a, a customization app, a customization solution, sorry, you could create your app based on that solution too. Okay, so sometimes before creating the app, there are some um, people that create some customizations and include everything in one solution. And, er and after that, probably they want to. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me show you, okay, and additionally, you could configure uh, the, 
the we could configure some additional information here, like a welcome page. Uh, if you want to include the welcome page, I mean, when someone click the app, probably you could present a specific page uh, uh, as a web, uh, as a welcome page. And additionally, you could enable the mobile offline. This is an additional functionality that you could use. It's not just check this. I mean, you need to check it, of course. But additionally, if you want to run uh, some uh, functionalities offline, you need to go to your entities and just check it as all offline um, entities. Okay, but I mean, that that's something that you need to do, both, both things you need to do, both things if you want to use uh, offline um, functionality. But it's something that um, I'm not going to go deep in this in this session on that. Probably I will do another one talking specifically about that. But um, this is the, the, the initial um, page for creating an app. Uh, let me just try to enter to one app. Okay, so if you click here, you will define the name, the unique name, the description, and all information that I already mentioned, okay? After, I mean, if you don't want to use, for example, this default menu, you could just click here, and you will see here that you could use any of the web resources that you are, already have created. Probably, um, I mean, it should be image, something like that. No, sorry. Um, logo, for example, this one. Okay. So if you want to configure your own app with your own icon, you just need to create a web resource. And after that, you are going to have available that web resource here. Okay. So when you click on new, I mean, when you they find all this information and just click on done. You will be redirected to the designer menu. Okay, that is something that I want to show you now. Okay, let me just enter to my app, for example, this one, and I'm going to open the app designer. Okay, so when you create the app, the, the, the first screen that you're going to see is going to be this one. Okay. If for some reason you didn't include the icon or you want to change some specific um, elements in your app, you could go to properties, this menu, change the name and change the description if you want. If you want to define the icon, you could just remove this one and define this one. For example, in my case, uh, Optimus app, okay. And additionally, you could define, I mean, uh, the CRM is going to provide you the, the URL, the direct URL, you want to share that. And if you want to activate the welcome or the mobile um, offline, okay? So you could just change it there, just click on save. And after that, you are ready for customize your sitemap. Okay, so what is your sitemap? When you enter to the app, for example, in my case, if I enter here to my app, all this menu, I mean, all this navigation is going to be configured in my side map, okay? So how do I configure my side map? So after click on done, I mean, after click, after filling in all these fields and after that clicking the done button, you will be redirected to the side map um, designer, basically the app designer. So all you need to do is go to the sitemap icon or the sitemap uh, button, just click there and you will be in a sitemap editor, okay? Uh, it's really easy to configure. Actually, I'm going to be configuring um, uh, on this, on this, at this moment. But basically you just need to go here. Let me go there. So if I click in this icon, I will see all the menu that I have configured there. For example, I have a sales, uh, I have a customer service, marketing, and sharing. So these, these, these elements are areas. So what is that? If I click here on sales, all of these are areas. So if you want the sales area, customer service, marketing, but you could have, uh, I mean, uh, another areas that probably you wanted like, projects or like, um, I don't know, something that you want to configure, like for example, catalogs, or if you want to configure security, or if you want to configure the area that you need, okay? After create an area, for example, let me see here, 
If I enter to this area, for example, the marketing, we could create, after that, we could create groups. What is a group? My workspace is a group, customer is a group, campaigns management is a group, okay? So if you want to create a new group, you just need to click a group. You need to define a name, uh, my special group, okay? And after that, if you want to include some specific entities there, you just need to click on add and add a sub area, okay? And when you select a sub area, the CRM is going to ask you for some additional information. For example, the type. What is the type? Uh, if you want to create a menu to redirect to the dashboard functionality, you just need to create in dashboard. If you want to use something like entity, you could select here the entity that you want to configure. For example, uh, if you want to create an option for going directly to, I don't know, some specific uh, entity, you could do it. For example, let's say that there's going to be custom tax, okay? And you could define here the title that you want to include. If you don't want to use the regular name or, or the plural name, uh, you could define the icon, you will define all the information that you need. Uh, if you need to change that, Additionally, you could configure some uh, specific information or some advanced information like privilege, like, I mean, there is a lot of things here that you could configure by, by default and bef uh, before start uh, be, uh, I mean, before complicate yourself with, with this information, just leave it like this. I mean, just create an area, create a group, and after that, just create um, a sub, uh, a sub area that will be the entity, okay? If you don't want to entity, you could select a dashboard menu, you could select an entity, of course, you could select a web resource. If you want, for example, ready deck to a specific web resource that you have configured in your CRM, or additionally, you could configure a URL. If you want to ready deck, for example, to a specific URL, probably I have one here. Uh, yes, I think that this one, yes. This one, the system settings, um, it's a specific URL that is not something available in CRM. I mean, it's not something um, available by default. Uh, let me show you that. For example, if you enter to the system settings, it's a specific URL that is available in CRM to configure additional things. And that's something that I include in the menu because it's, it's not quite easy to come here. So that's why I configure as a menu and I just include it as a website. Oh, of course, I didn't I didn't create this URL. I just searched a little bit and I just found this, this URL. But if you want to include that in the menu, you just need to select here URL and include the URL there and just define a title and that's it. If you want to very direct to a different, a different website or something like that, you could do it that way, okay? So the only thing that you need to do is create a menu with the functionalities that you want. If you want to delete this, you could delete this. And that's it. If you want to clone it, if you want to copy, you could do it many different things here, okay? After that, after configure this, you just need to save it. And before publish, probably you could go back to the app designer, just click in the app designer menu. And I will be explaining uh, uh, additional things that you are going to find there. Uh, let me see, I don't want to miss anything here. So just click here. Okay, add components, what is that? Every time that you include, that you include um, an entity in the menu, uh, the entity is going to be included immediately in the components uh, by default. But additionally, if you want to add some additional entities, you could do it as well, okay? Um, let me explain you how to do it and, and why you should do it. So as I mentioned, every time that you include an entity here, the CRM is going to include the entity that you include in the menu directly here, okay? But let's say, uh, for example, if you don't want to have all the forms and all the builds available in your app, for example, let me show you that. For example, accounts. If you enter here, if you enter to sales, if you enter to the views, 
you will see that there is a lot of views by default, okay? Let's say that for this specific app, you don't want to have these uh, uh, views available. So you could restrict that too. You could come here and uncheck the all and just select the, uh, the views that you want to see. In the same way, you could restrict the dashboards, you could re restrict the forms. For example, in my case, I don't want to see these forms. I just want to see my custom form and, and the quick forms that their CRM has by default, but I want to have my own form. So that's why I just uncheck the all uh, option and uh, I just define the forms that I want to see. In this way, the people is going to be less confusing. I mean, when you select new, the people is not going to have the, uh, the possibility to change the form because you are going to define the form that you want to see, the specific form. And additionally, for example, there are some companies that I that I probably implemented before that they don't want to present the whole menu to all the people. For example, to the sales agents, they want to present just a menu with the opportunities, leads, contacts, and that's it. Something like that. So you could restrict the, the options that you want to present in a different group of apps. Okay. Additionally, you could configure here, here the dashboard that you want to present in the same way. When you click on dashboards, you are going to see a lot of information. I mean, a lot of dashboard here. And sometimes present so much information is not quite good. I mean, some people just don't use it because it's too much and they don't want to see the things that, I mean, they want to see just the specific things. So in, the, in those cases, I really recommend you just probably the, just leave the dashboard that you are going to be using or just create a specific dashboards with, with the, the information that you want to present, okay? Additionally, you should define the business process flow that you want to include in your app. By default, it's going to be in all, but sometimes you don't want to include all the business process flow in all your apps, okay? So on this way, you could configure a lot of different things and, and, it's, and it's really easy, really simple. Um, as I mentioned, when you add an uh, 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 entity here, the CRM is going to be included automatically, but sometimes you need to include it by yourself. What it means, for example, if you want to include, let me see if I have um, one example here. If for example, you have the uh, account entity, let me enter here. Um, let's say that you have some specific, um, uh, let, let's say this one. For example, this one. This is a custom entity with the name custom tag. If I click here, oh, okay, I just select um, one that's already deactivated, but let me see if this is inactive too. Why, I don't know. Okay, for example, this one. So I'm going to click on custom tag and I'm going to click in add uh, a new one. So as you can see here, the, the, the quick create form doesn't appear. Probably the entity is already configured with quick creation, but the form doesn't appear. The reason why it happens is that you don't include the, 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 the entity here. So if you don't include the entity here, like for example, on this case, the custom tag is already there, but you can see here, uh, there's not a customer custom tag entity here. So you just need to click on edit entities. And after that, you just need to probably define the name here. Customer custom tag, let's say this one. And after that, I mean, with that, the, the, the quick creation is going to work. I mean, if the entity is already configured with, with quick, uh, quick creation, the, the problem is going to be solved. So when you want to use quick creation, you need to go to the entity, check the quick create button. After that, you need to include the, the entity in your app. And later, if everything is configured properly, uh, when you create in custom tags and you create a new, 
is going to be open the, the, the quick read. It's a really um, like common error, but it's something that is really easy to solve. I mean, most of the time, probably you are going to go directly to the entity, identify that it's already checked out quick read, but it's not going to work. And the reason is that if you don't include the entity in the in the app, it's not going to work. Okay, that's that's why. Okay, let's go back to the menu and let's continue with the with the topic. Um, okay, that's the add components functionality that I explained you. And after that, you need to validate your app. What is validate your app? Uh, you just need to go um, to the, the the menu in in the designer. I mean, let me go here, and you could just click on validate, and if everything is correct, uh, this doesn't going to appear. But if not, uh, the CRM is going to present you some elements that probably you want to include. Sometimes are errors, sometimes I'm just warnings, like in this case, um, uh, for example, say appointment type doesn't refer a form or view. Okay, there are some elements that, uh, I mean, if I don't include an, uh, an entity here, means that I want the standard behavior. So if, for example, uh, if I create a case and that case has a relation with appointment time, for example, so what's going to be happening is that the CRM is going to present the standard functionality because I didn't include the, the entity here. So it means that I want the standard functionality, but even though the, the CRM present the, the dependencies menu here, I mean, the dependencies uh, message here, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work. I just need to review that uh, all the messages uh, should be warning. Uh, I mean, should be something that I, I could just review and I, I could handle. But if it's some error, it's going to appear like a different message. Like for example, this one, I'm sorry. It's going to be like error message. And that's something that you need to review because it's, if not, um, the CRM is not going to allow you to publish that, okay? Um, as I mentioned, the CRM is going to show you some warnings with the number of warnings that it identifies. For example, there are some missing required assets or some missing views or something like that. But if you don't, if you don't include it and if you publish the app, the CRM is going to be presenting the functionality by default, okay? So sometimes the, the, the warnings are not too important, but sometimes probably is something that you need to just look at. If there are some required assets or something like that, something missing, uh, you could go directly to the entity and you could identify what is specifically missing. What is that? For example, I came here, I could click here, and here I will see the dependencies. And the CRM is going to tell me that probably you need to include this because it's a required component. Uh, entitlements, okay? So the CRM is going to present you this message and it's going to tell you why it's, why it's important, okay? And you could just check and, and it's going to be solved. But sometimes, for example, in my case, I don't want to use social profile. I don't want to use entitlements. I don't want to use, I mean, so I could leave it like this because I am aware of that and I don't want to include it. But if you are not sure, probably the best way is try to include everything because if you're not sure, probably it's something that you are going to need. Okay, but if not, you don't include it, the functionality that is going to be presented is going to be the standard one. So that's something additional that you have to keep in mind. If you don't include it, it's going to be the standard one. Okay, after you add all the components and after validate and after set the app, you just need to go to the common bar and select the publish button. I just realized that I just did it um, like unconsciously, but uh, it's something really easy. Uh, I mean, you just need to go to the designer and you just need to click here in publish. Sometimes it's not going to be enabled. And the reason is that if you don't, uh, if you don't change anything and you already published, uh, the button is not going to be available. But if, for example, I click here and I select anything else, like for example, I don't know, let's say that I'm going to be, uh, let's remove this one. Oh, okay, so if you change anything and you save it, 
the publish button is going to be available and it's going to tell you that you are in draft uh, until you publish yet. Okay, so you just need to publish the, the, the app and, and after that, the app is going to be available just straight here. Okay, it's going to be available here with the icon that you define and you could start using it, okay? I mean, you could start using it, but it's something still that is pending to configure. And, and it's the access management. That is something that I'm going to be just going to at this moment. After publish your app, you need to go to the apps menu and you need to define your roles that you want to allow to access the app. That's, this is really even probably the most important thing. Because if you don't do that, the app is going to be available for you and for all the administ administrators, sorry. But it's not going to be available for anyone else. So it's something that you should do if you want to share or if you want to allow the access to the people uh, to your app. Okay, let's do this. Uh, so how, how you could do it? You should go to your app here and you should go to the manage roles menu. Okay, the CRM is going to present you this. You, so, you should select the, the roles that you want to allow to access to that app. In my case, uh, well, let me select this one. And, and I have the system administrator and the system customizer. But if I want to enable that app for someone else, I could select, for example, this one, okay? I mean, all the roles that you wanted. And after that, you just need to select on save. Okay, that's it. You just need to enable the roles to access to your app. But if you, do, if you don't do that, the app is going to be available for you and nobody else is going to see that app. Okay, so that's why it's really important. Okay, if you want to if you want to send or if you want to move this app to a different instance, I mean for a QA environment or for a production environment, you need to create a solution. Include this in the solution. Include the the, the model driven app. I mean, you just need to come here. We cannot say an added system if you create it in the other way. But if you create directly here, the app is going to be directly here in your solution. You just need to export the solution and you just need to import the solution in the new environment and that's it. Okay, so I recommend you export the solution after 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 you do the the the, the manage flow configuration. Because if not, probably you are not you are going to be, I mean you you will be uh, doing the same in the other environment. So please configure it before moving the, 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 the solution to the new environment. Okay. Okay, so uh, that's the configuration of an app. That's the configuration of the of the access. So now if you want to try it by yourself, uh, you probably you could go to this instance. It's not the instance that I was presenting, but it's a trial instance that is available. And you could go there, you could use this user and this password, and you could start doing your own maps and you could start your, I mean, the idea is try to do it by yourself because sometimes if you look at uh, a webinar like this one, or if you look at uh, a YouTube video or something like that, it's not going to be the same. You need to do it by yourself. You need to try it. You need to understand what you're doing. And after that, uh, probably, uh, is going to be the best possible way to, to understand and, and to learn something. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, if you have any question or if you have any comment or if you have any issue with your own apps, please send me an email. I will be helping you as soon as I can. Uh, so that's it for today. Thank, thanks for your time and let's see you in, a, in another uh, webinar in the future. Thank you.